The team at Capture One reached out to partner on a new video, and I thought this would be a great opportunity to talk about something I've been wanting to talk about for a very long time, why Burnt, starring Bradley Cooper and Sienna Miller, is one of the greatest good-bad movies of all time. Well, it turns out that that's already been covered before, so instead, we're gonna talk about something far more relatable. This video is all about how I manage, curate, edit, and share my photography with the help of Capture One Pro in the field. Just like the pyramids, it's all about having the right foundation. So when I am going out on a photography adventure, I will bring two drives with me. One SSD for speed and that I can use to edit off of if needed, and one hard drive as a backup. The first thing I'm gonna do is take this SSD, format it, and start building out a folder structure. We have our master folder that has the year, month, day, and the place we're going to, or the name of the project itself. Within this, I will create a separate folder for each day. So a day and a city that I'm gonna be in. Within that folder, I'm gonna create a photo and video folder, and they're gonna mirror each other in terms of their structure. So let's go into the photo folder. Here, I will have a separate folder for each camera I'm bringing with me. For some of you that are lucky, it's just one camera. For those of you that are packing few bodies, yeah, you're gonna have a few folders here. And this is where I will be importing my photography every night. Every evening I come back, I will import photos into this SSD. Once all the files are here and organized, I will make a copy onto that hard drive. So if you're following along, there are now two copies of everything that I'm capturing in the field, just in case of an emergency. Now say I'm in a specific city and we do a very specific project. Maybe we're doing an editorial shoot or maybe we're visiting a, a unique place and I want to remember this. I'll create another folder within the images that are sectioned under a camera just so it can be easier to find in the future. If all of this feels involved and complex, it's because it is. The reason I put this much effort every single evening when I'm overseas is so that in the future, whether it's five, 10, 15, 20 years from now, be it myself or someone else, we can go back and find exactly what we're looking for. All right, so now that you know exactly how I organize and structure my files when I'm overseas, let's jump into Capture One Pro and create some heat. On the first evening when I arrive in a destination, I'm gonna create a session in Capture One Pro. I've made a video talking about the difference between sessions and catalogs, but in short, the value of a session is that you have a copy of all your images that sits in a folder, and you can move this folder from location to location, and all your edits and organization within Capture One Pro moves along with it. So I will create a Capture One Pro session on my desktop. This will create a master folder with a set of subfolders for your imports, your selects, your outputs, and your trash. Every evening, I will go ahead and import the images from that day into Capture One Pro. From here, I will create some smart albums. The smart albums basically look at the metadata of the camera and organize your images for you. I'll create a smart album for each specific camera that I'm using, just so it's easy for me to go in and pick a specific shot from a particular body. Next, I'll create your standard album and I'll create one for each city that I'll be visiting on a particular adventure. And again, if you're following along, we now have three copies of all of our photography. We have one on the SSD that will be stored and accessed for speed. We have one on a hard drive that is there as a backup. And we have one on our desktop, which we'll be working from and editing and curating from. Three copies just to give us an extra peace of mind while we're abroad. Once I've imported the images into the session for that evening, that same evening, I'm gonna go through and I'm now using the snap to eye function to quickly scan through images to see which ones are usable. They don't have to be perfectly in focus. Is there enough focus, enough of a story, enough of a composition for this to be an interesting photograph that I would want to look at later? The key here is not to overthink it. Go with your gut. What I do here is I use the minus key to tag an image red. And this is just an easy way to categorize your files. And from this selection, I can then sort my images and move them into the selects folder. From here, I'll give the images a rating of three to five. Three means that it's worth sharing online. Four means that it's worth writing about. And five means that it's worth printing, at least for me. 
Everything I've just described, from importing, to selecting, to color tagging, to starring, I'm only spending about 10 minutes every evening. It is not an involved process, it's very quick to do, and sets me up for success when I get to editing. Before I get into the editing, I gotta say, if you're enjoying this video or this type of video, be sure to sign up for the Church and Street Photo Community. This is the place where every week I'm sharing a photography story from my adventures all over the world. And if you love photography, I think you're gonna love being a part of this community. When I jump into editing, the first thing I'm gonna do is find that crop. Find that frame that's gonna best tell the story that I'm trying to tell. From here, I'm gonna apply an empty layer style. This is a style that I've created that just applies a few extra layers. There's no changes, there's no edits in here. It's just a set of empty layers that I use to break out my editing process. The base layer will house any black and white conversions and grain. The other layers will house edits respective to those layers be it color, sharpness, clarity, highlights, levels, what have you. The reason I do this is just so that it is easier for me to go in and fine tune the image and I know I can then adjust these layers and adjust the strength to which they're impacting the photo. All right, so let's look at the highlights and levels layer. This is the next one that I'm gonna work on. This is where I'm deciding what does the overall luminance and exposure of the image look like? How bright are the highlights gonna be? How dark are the shadows gonna be? at a general level. I'm using the levels tool, the exposure tool, the high dynamic range tool here to really dial it into a place that I'm happy with. Next, I'll jump into the sharpness and clarity layer to really pull back the sharpness of some of these modern cameras, just enough so that you can see where the subject is, where the background is, and, and overall have an image that is pleasing to look at. More often than not, I'll jump back to the base layer here and introduce some grain to help take away that bite, that sharpness, that, that crispiness that modern cameras might have with respect to overall sharpness. Next is the trickier part. This is the color and curves layer. This is where I'm gonna be deciding on the look of an image. This is where I'll be crafting a specific vibe, a feel, a tone, whatever you wanna call it for the photograph and more broadly, the city that I'm photographing in. I'll jump here, move between the basic color management tools, the advanced color management tools, and even the advanced skin management tools to dial in the color, not necessarily to be accurate, but to represent the feeling of a place that I've had. Especially on the first few nights, I'm experimenting. I'm, I'm really taking my time to find a place where I'm happy, where I feel like, okay, these images, it gives me the feeling of what I felt when my eyes first laid on a particular city or environment. From here, I'll move to the curves tool to introduce contrast and I'll use the luminance or RGB channels to really build a look to give a little bit more drama to the image. If I'm thinking of curve, I'm thinking of drama. That's how I sort of separate the idea of color and curve. The goal is to emphasize complementary and analogous colors. The first few nights, this process can take much longer because I'm really looking to build a look that can be used across the trip. With enough time and patience, I'll be able to land in a place where I have a specific style that lends itself to the place that I'll be spending most of my time. I'll then save all of this work into a new style that I can quickly use as a starting point for new images. But we're just scratching the surface here. With my four and five star images, I'm gonna leverage the new powerful tools of Capture One to get even more granular with the edit. I'll use the new AI selection tool to create a brand new layer that can isolate the subject and isolate the background. From here, I'll jump in and go into the curve tool to bring a little bit more depth to the image, or maybe the advanced color editor to push and pull colors in a specific direction so they might be a little bit more lined up with the background or maybe they pop even more from the background. I tell you, when I first heard about these tools, I thought, you know, how accurate could it be? How good could it be? Turns out they're really good. I've been using them night after night after night, and it is, it is astounding how accurate these selections are. Because of how fast it is and how accurate it is, it means that I'm spending less time behind the computer. I can do all of this pretty quickly, right? Especially if I've already built a style, I apply a style, adjust the levels of some of the layers, then create this new selection layer, and within minutes, I can have an image that, that really speaks to me. 
Once I'm done my granular edits, I'm done. I hit the plus key to mark an image as a green color tag. I then move it to the output folder and then I'll use one of the export recipes to share my image to the desktop, to the phone, what have you. All right, let's take a minute for the sponsor of this channel and that is Capture One Pro. They've been partners for years now and I went to them. I said, give me the best damn offer. I can offer to my audience. Give me something amazing. And they've come to the table with something pretty impressive. Starting today, all the way through November 27th, you can save 50% off for both new and existing customers on Capture One Pro. This is the best offer they've ever delivered on this channel. Here's an additional bonus. If you decide, whether you're a new customer or an existing customer, to get Capture One Pro, use my code and you will receive their Beyond Film Style Pack. This, this usually costs some dollars, but for you, if you upgrade right now or whether you start your journey with Capture One Pro right now, you're gonna get this style pack that they've created absolutely free. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you know how much I've been using and relying on Capture One Pro for the work that I'm doing and my thanks to them for being an incredible partner. If you've ever been curious, this is the best time to try Capture One Pro and I'll leave a link to a playlist with all my tutorials that will get you up and running much faster. There's a romance to traveling the world in search of your next great image, but also there's a massive disconnect between what people think you're doing and what's actually happening. The reality is you spend a shit ton of time trudging between airports, sleeping poorly regardless of how many stars are on the hotel, eating mostly for a sustenance than substance, all the while you have this existential concern on whether any of this even matters. I say all of this as a reminder that, that great work, great imagery, it demands an even greater sacrifice. If you truly love this thing called photography, push yourself, get out of your comfort zone, and really get yourself into a position where you are learning like everything is counting on it. Anyway, that's enough of my call to arms or whatever you wanna call it. I really enjoyed making this video and my thanks to Capture One Pro for being an incredible partner over the years to allow me to share these stories as well. As always, my name's Gadgen. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.